Ashe. Greetings, a grand rising, a grand and a beautiful day to you all once again, my natural native earthly humans, and welcome to this part 13 of my series of talks titled Another Perspective Analysis and Interpretation of the very famous prose poem called Desiderata by the late Max Ehrman. You know, you don't know that it is yours truly. I, the Mystic P, along with, yes, of course, this my companion, yes, my old Max guitar, and my recorded chirping bird sounds here chirping and echoing the melodious natural healing natural comforting and therapeutic sounds in the background in the foreground and all around yours through the eye the mystic p now again just to remind you that if you haven't yet watched um, part one, or if this is the first time you just bump up, bump, uh, come across this video, I um, would suggest that if you haven't watched from part one to this now part number 13, so if you haven't watched part one to number 12, I would suggest that you do so before you watch this part, um, part 13, because as mentioned before, I can almost guarantee you that you'll get a better understanding, understanding and overstanding of the perspectives and insights that I'm sharing. Yes, they are my perspectives, so you know, you don't necessarily, necessarily have to identify with them, but they may provoke you to see things a little differently, or become a little more tolerant of, of some other views and insights. Now, so in here in part 13, let me continue focus on sharing my perspective and my analysis, insights and interpretation on stanza uh, number one of the Desiderata. And stanza number one goes like this, go placidly amid the noise and haste and remember what peace there may be in silence. Now, I ask that you please note that he, or Desiderata, did not say, go amidst the noise and haste, or get up and go amid the noise and haste. But it specifically say that we, or assuming Max Ehrman was talking to his daughter, that she should and must go placidly amid the noise and haste not just go amid the noise and haste or get up and go but go placidly amid the noise and haste that to me is not just an answer but it is also a command it's not just an answer to the question how should i go or how should we go but it is a command, it's an order as to how we should go. From my perspective, another way of saying that is that is to put on the whole armor of all that is enveloped. That we should put on the whole armor of all that is enveloped into the word placidly and go face the world, which I've also described and we'll be telling you more about here and what does the word placidly mean placid and by extension placidly means and is defined as quiet serene calm and gentle so from this we can substitute or may alternate the word placidly here in stanza number one of this Dorata to say, go quietly, go serenely, go calmly, 
go gently amid the noise and the haste, or amid the noise and haste. Placidly also mean to be undisturbed by tumult or disorder. Placidly or placid also means and is defined as a person or an animal that does not get upset, angry, or excited easily. Does not get upset, angry, or excited easily. Or if you prefer, placidly mean or placid mean a person or an animal that is not easily provoked. The word I ask that you please take note of and bear in mind as I continue my um, insight, sharing my perspectives. And as we continue on to the end here, the word that I ask you to please bear in mind at all time, from this moment on, is the word easily. Easily. Pay attention to that word. I ask that you please note very carefully that this does not say and nor does it mean that a placid person or a placid animal or a person or animal that is placid or a person or an animal that is being an animal that is being placid does not, cannot, or will not get upset, disturbed, angry, or excited. And that if or when necessary, will not forcefully and violently defend itself, or defend himself, or herself. Not at all. For example, a person or an animal being placid, a.k.a. being calm, being peaceful, being gentle, etc. does not mean that it or does not mean that if or when him, her or it find themselves in danger, when him, her or itself finds that their individual lives and their security and that of their family are in danger and is seriously threatened that they would remain or will remain as if completely unperturbed by what's happening. So please don't misconstrue the use of the word placid and placidly here in the Zetarata to mean permanently sheepish, permanently docile and passive, and thus subject yourself to all forms of abuse. And disrespect. From either mystic philosopher's perspective, placid, and by extension placidly, does not mean or in the least imply that one is dead or that one must behave as if one is dead or as if one is hypnotized, tranquilized, unconscious, or comatose. You name it. Or you name them. For as my beloved and late mom used to say, and I quote, Provocation. Make. Do me talk. Let me translate that in English. For those who don't understand the Jamaican lingua. Lingo. Provocation will make a dumb man or a woman talk. And she would continue. And if or when you provoke a dumb man or a woman and make them talk, it could spell very serious trouble for you. It could spell danger. Secondly. Placid, and by extension placidly, does not mean stupid, idiotic, foolish, etc. Thus one should interpret this to mean go stupidly, go idiotically, go foolishly, etc. into the world. To be placid or to go placidly does not mean that you suspend your basic natural human intelligence that's from my perspective to be from either mystic philosopher's perspective to be placid does to be placid or to go placidly does not mean that you suspend 
your basic natural human intelligence, logic, reason, or reasoning, and basic activated common sense, or basic common sense, and thus become stupid and thereby allow all sort of liberty to be taken of you. Now, I have personally seen, I have seen, and I'm, I personally know a lot of people, some of my own people, some of whom have read the this, this same um, prose poem, Desiderata, daily, and in the name of their religion and religious practices and religious beliefs, they become even more stupid instead of becoming placid, as implied. They somehow directly or indirectly interpret the word placid to mean stupid and for them to act or behave stupidly. I have seen and observed people, some of my own melanated and IK African people, that after reading the Desiderata, turn around and try to correlate it with quotes from the Christian Holy Bible. Which alleges, which alleges that the man or the character commonly known and commonly called Jesus Christ or Yahushua said, and I quote, You have heard that it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth, but I tell you, do not resist an evil man. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your, your shirt, hand them your coat as well. And coat, that is according to the Adamic Race History and Holy Book, Matthew 5, 38 to 40. To which I, the mystic philosopher, say to them, are you kidding? Are you kidding me? No wonder these people call themselves sheep and have others call them sheep and identify themselves as sheep. For among the animal kingdom, from my observation, among the animal kingdom, only a sheep that would and can be that docile and downright stupid. And the truth be told, I think that I should qualify that by saying only a domesticated sheep aka a civilized sheep that would be an act so docile and so downright stupid the evidence will show that even a jackass aka a donkey will naturally resist and would naturally resist an evil person and it would naturally resist a, a, an evil person handler and abuser a jackass would, uh, would, would resist even a jackass aka a donkey will kick or even bite an abuser if and when it is being provoked if and when it is being abused on and mistreated etc to be placid or to go placidly does not mean that you automatically become stupid to the point that you allow someone to become or to um, become brave enough and confident, confident enough to take the liberty and box you or to slap you under your cheek, possibly breaking your jaw or your jawbone. And then like a dumb docile sheep, you submissively turn the other cheek and allow them to box you again and thereby break your other jaw. Not at all. And I simply don't care who may have said or wrote those nonsense from my perspective. But I, the mystic philosopher, ain't gonna willingly, irresistibly, and submissively subject myself to such verbal nonsense and physical abuse. Quote, not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you, take your uh, uh, and take your your shirt, hand over your coat as well. Nonsense. 
That to me is beyond total insanity. That's my perspective. That may be not yours. If you're a sheep, it's not yours. To be placid, placid, does not mean that you should willfully allow people to subjugate you, to humiliate you, to de dehumanize you, to push you around or to trample all over you. That is not being placid. That is being stupid, period, and full stop. Therefore, go placidly means go quietly, go serenely, go calmly, go gently, go consciously, and above all, go wisely amidst the noise and haste. Go quietly, serenely, calmly, gently, consciously, and above all, go wisely in the middle of the noise and the haze, which by now you know what is meant by the noise and haze, and what noise and haste represent. In summary, it represents the evil, unjust, wicked, and abominable people that dominate the world. These wicked and abominable people that we must interact with and live and move amongst. And this our planet, especially at this time in the history of our planet. Now, this will be the end of part 13. Yes. So, please, um, please um, stay tuned to this channel. Yes, the Mystic P Acoustically. And join me again tomorrow for part 14. And that is, if I am gifted with another day, and one in which I continue to experience and full joy, good health, abundant life, freedom, safety, peace of mind, and good relationships with people like you, all my listeners and my well-wishers. Please join me tomorrow when and where I will continue to share with you some more of my perspective, analysis, insights, and interpretation of stanza number one of Desiderata. Go placidly amid the noise and haste and remember what peace they may be in silence. In the meantime and between time, I ask that you please continue to think, meditate, and contemplate on the word placidly and lively up yourself, full joy, and be more and more and much, much more. And don't be less. It is not my will for you to be less, but to be more. In your becoming, become more, not less, aka bless. For I am the mystic philosopher. Ashe. Ashe. Ashe, I say.